my name is Richard, uh, but everybody around the, the world knows me as Rick Blumberg. Uh, I'm professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School. Uh, been in this community since 1982, first at the Mass General for four years, where I did infectious diseases, and then I came to the Brigham in 86, uh, where I trained in gastroenterology and uh, spent three year, wonderful years at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute learning immunology and then came back to the Brigham in 1990 and have uh, been, ever, been here ever since. Well, I grew up with my father. <laughs> uh, always helps. Uh, always helps, yeah. Um, I, I think that uh, it's important to uh, uh, get comfortable outside yourself and think outside yourself um, and uh, expose yourself uh, to things um, that you're not necessarily um, uh, familiar with, uh, um, uh, and uh, you can do that in many different ways, uh, but the best way is just to, to read uh, outside of, of medicine, read, read outside of science, and, and uh, what, uh, interestingly, uh, and, pay, and sometimes the world affects you in, 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 uh, in uh, obtuse ways, so in the early uh, 1990s, very early 1990s, uh, when before I even thought about the idea of translating anything, uh, although I was naturally translational in my thinking, in, in hindsight, when you think about the things that I did scientifically as a, as a fellow at the Mass General, or uh, then later at the Brigham, uh, but more at the Mass General when I was an infectious disease fellow, uh, but some of the political things that were going on in the world uh, started to influence me a bit. I may have had the innate uh, interest in uh, being a translator and an entrepreneur, but uh, uh, it was, it was the, the, the discussions of the business of medicine and politics that really got me thinking about, uh, the, that there, uh, about the business of medicine. Um, it was Hill uh, during the discussions of Hillary. Yeah, Trump, right, uh, right. Interestingly, long ago. Uh, long ago, and it started to make me read and think, and then I started reading vigorously about uh, the business of medicine. Um, I started reading about uh, uh, entrepreneurs um, uh, from uh, work that came out. I mentioned this to you uh, from MIT. A lot of a lot of literature on that, and that started to make me think about. Things are, and it didn't really say, uh, Rick, go become an entrepreneur, but it made, made it prepared the soil for the uh, unexpected things that happened in my scientific career. Well, it was again there was other things that were happening at that time, and uh, we talked privately. Um, I became so interested in uh, the world outside the walls of academia, where I'd been my entire life, uh, that I uh, actually decided to. Uh, go to Northeastern University and get some training in, uh, in, at night school uh, in, uh, in business yep. uh, to really try to understand it because I was a pure chemistry major in college. I couldn't even balance my checkbook. <laughs> uh, so I, I had never taken any studies outside yeah, of yeah. being a Bachelor of Science degree in chemistry and biologic sciences. And that also influenced me so that when the events started uh, uh, hitting me in my, my own personal independent career as a, as a young physician scientist, as an instructor, then assistant professor, my mind was just really ready to receive those, those inputs and uh, to, uh, to look at them different than if I had been just a, uh, uh, a physician scientist with the, without those experiences outside the walls of academia. Yep. But in the context of being prepared, uh, that a uh, an amazing result came to me yeah. uh, in July. Actually, July, I know it's July twenty second, nineteen ninety two, because I saved the experiment. Uh, a, uh, a, a, a a postdoc uh, at that time came into my office and showed me what he thought was a failed experiment. Uh, and sometimes when I give uh, when I give presentations on that particular area of investigation, I always show that one experiment. Uh, and it, 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 well, number one, if that postdoc had not come into my office, and number two, I had not been re uh, prepared to receive right. the data in a way that uh, I, was, I would think differently about that, right. I wouldn't have recognized right away the uh, huge translational opportunities from that experiment. 
And sometimes there are experiments that can hit you like that, uh, that uh, can you, that, that in light of your own knowledge of the science, your own knowledge of uh, translation, I just happen to also be uh, fortunate that I'm a medical doctor. Uh, it doesn't mean you can't see translation opportunities if you're not a medical doctor, but I have my own way of thinking from that experience. I was prepared to receive that, and uh, a lot of stuff crystallized in my mind very, very quickly yeah. because of that true serendipity. Um, and uh, that, uh, that event began me really thinking uh, uh, about what to do with this, uh, this result. So ironic that we're having this conversation in the, uh, at 77 Louis Pasteur Boulevard since yeah. we, are, we are talking about chance favoring the, the uh, prepared mind, right? Right. Yeah, so it's a very much an expression of one of his most famous observations. But I think that's probably how most um, translational studies yeah, yeah. work. Unless you're uh, an engineer trying to, an engineering type that's product oriented um, and trying to uh, solve a particular problem. Um, in the biologic sciences, it's a little bit uh, different, um, but not necessarily. Uh, 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 things are changing all the time with a lot of the, the new approaches to defining targets and, and so forth that are coming through high throughput medicine. But, uh, but a, a lot of biology, I think, is still very, very different. It comes through these kinds of, this kind of experimentation that is close, close to the patient. Uh, either through, it could be cell lines, it could be primary human material, whatever, but uh, it can give you the, the nidus of thinking that uh, this may be a really important opportunity. And one of the things that my, uh, that, that experience with my postdoc taught me and my own personal experiences as I was getting going is uh, uh, that number one, if you have a failed experiment, don't just discard it. Yeah, right. Uh, uh, and uh, two, uh, one of the things I used to do all the time when I was first starting my laboratory is, uh, you could do it then, is to go th back through all of my work over and over again and relook at it, try to look at it from a different perspective all the time. Yeah. Once you do get that uh, biologic glimmer because you had a sense of something, you did some experimentation, or you happen to be doing a line of experimentation like I was doing at the time and it just started to give a serendipitous result, uh, when you either through the pressure of your direction of scientific experimentation or the or the luck and the, the serendipity that actually happens and you're prepared to recognize what, uh, what what may be in front of you that might provide itself as being a uh, uh, a, a translational path uh, you should uh, it should start to um, uh, take a step back and think about try to put it into perspective and start to think about uh, what uh, be, be a little bit um, relaxed in your thinking, I like to say, and try to imagine and envision where this might take you, yep. where this could go. And, and be, try to be, what I try to be is a little bit uh, um, uh, um, anticipatory, um, visionary to the best of my ability, that is really try to think about all the possible permutations of where this could go in, in terms of a translational uh, endpoint and even thinking about things that might not necessarily uh, be realistic from what you know at the time but try to I guess what I'm saying is trying to look as far into the future as you can yep um, and so that as you're uh, so that you point yourself in the right direction because um, the, the direction that you take um, it, the very first direction you take is the most critical decision yeah. because if you start down a path that's wrong uh, you'll find that you've uh, wasted a lot of time. So, uh, you know, so again, er early on, I think back, what, you know, in each of the instances where we translated something, uh, the very first thing, uh, for me at least, uh, is to uh, find a scientific partner. Uh, because there are very few things that you can do yourself. Yeah, right, right. Um, and uh, in each of the examples that uh, I've, uh, I've, uh, succeed or try to succeed, I've always had um, uh, close relationships with uh, scientific colleagues that I like to work with, that I respect, that, in, uh, that, are, that are different than me and right. that have other skill sets and not, uh, that, are, that will make me, make me better. Uh, but also, um, uh, uh, earlier than, than not, uh, 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 if it, not, not immediately in those first you know, few moments or days or maybe even 
uh, months, but not too long after you start to get data that, uh, that from those relationships that uh, corroborate your thinking, uh, to start to think about talking to folks with business skill. Well, the first thing is the disclosure, needless to say. And, um, and uh, which didn't exist when I first started. Yeah. Because my first patent was, uh, was 1994, 95. A while ago? A while ago. And we didn't have, there were no disclosures here. Yeah. At the, at the Brigham. There was actually one person at the Brigham and Women's Hospital at that then. And there wasn't even a partner's innovation office. Right. <laughs> my God, hard to believe. <laughs> hard to believe. <laughs> um, but uh, it's, uh, it's evolved. But the, the, the principles are basically the same. It just one is more formalized than the other. I think with the disclosures, the formality of the disclosures is a really good thing um, because um, it uh, provides some structure to your thinking. Uh, but it also, uh, in this era of trying to aiming to try to file early, that you know first to file. Right, right. I think uh, writing uh, the disclosure as early as possible is really important. So as soon as you. And I tend to do it early, right? And right. maybe that's right, or maybe that's wrong. Yeah, uh, but it's worthwhile for but you. But it's worthwhile because, at the very least, the disclosure will um, organize your thinking. You're going to get feedback. You can do it in a, in, a, in a single day, in a single sitting. So a few hours, yeah. but but of course, uh, as you've described before, you've thought it out ahead of time before you start writing that. Yeah. No, I, I usually, uh, not usually, all the time, whatever I do, uh, whether it's writing a grant, writing a paper. Uh, writing a patent disclosure, um, I've always spent a lot of time in my own mind mulling over the ideas um, and uh, tr uh, trying to imagine uh, what the uh, what I need to get done or what the implications of this opportunity is. And uh, then by then, I, you know, again, in a second instance, I've already I, I'm, a, I'm a new level of prepared yeah, mind. Great. And uh, then I just sit down and write it. Very different categories. Uh, it's actually much simpler to write a disclosure than uh, than a. I would compare, maybe uh, you know, a, a disclosure to a, a progress report for a for a Fair enough. Grant, Fair but, enough. Uh, but uh, because it, it doesn't it has to be more conceptual, right? Uh, as opposed to having um, a real data, the disclosure doesn't necessarily need that. Uh, that's why uh, it's mainly focused on the concepts um, and be as, as goal-oriented and as product-oriented as you can. More often than not, we write use patents, unfortunately. Uh, but those can be valuable, it, you know, even ideas, use patent ideas can still be right, valuable as right. a beginning to try to gain traction in a particular area. Um, and I think one of the reasons why it's good to write a disclosure soon is because it, it, it emphasizes the fact that the uh, that the innovation office uh, are our partners. They're they're just as important to the team as your scientists or your business partners, and they're going to give you uh, a, a, or the lawyers, and they're going to give you uh, some early uh, feedback uh, in terms of the validity uh, yep. of your idea. Yeah, so I, I would just say that uh, I think for a young person, I've seen this before with some of the folks in my lab. Uh, the, the, you know, the, the, when they look at the, uh, the invention disclosure, it seems daunting for them to sit down and do yes, it. Yes, yeah. Uh, but they, uh, 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 I always say to my kids, uh, do the hardest thing first. You yeah, know? yeah. Don't be afraid of hard yeah. things. And it's really, in the reality is it's not hard. Yes. Uh, uh, it's, it's just a, it's a, it's an ex a necessary and very important exercise. Uh, and, and it doesn't have to be perfect because the perfection will be hammered out in, in the discussions with the patent examiner, yes, the patent yeah, counsel yeah. rather. Uh, and uh, the, the invention disclosure is just an executive summary almost yes. uh, to help uh, frame the idea to the patent counsel who you end up working with shoulder to shoulder yep. in terms of generating a patent. Uh, and in my experience, the best patents are, uh, for, that I've been involved with myself are those where I've really taken the time to work shoulder to shoulder with the patent council, where they take the disclosure, they get a sense of my idea. Yeah. They typically will speak to me, and um, we will spend some time, and I'll really get into the details yeah. of the idea. And um, typically, they're quite talented, and they'll go off, and in, in an amazingly fast period of time, right. they'll come back to you with their product. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, then uh, I think a lot of 
it should not be, um, uh, you should not view the, the, the patent uh, counsel as a, a turnkey uh, boilerplate um, uh, uh, process. Uh, you, uh, the best patents are those where you take what the patent counsel has written and yes. go back and work in iterations as if you're writing a manuscript or a yeah. grant or anything. It, in, in a way, it's like having your own uh, high-end editor uh, yeah. for a manuscript. And, and, and the reality is we're very lucky here, uh, to say it again, because we have access, if you pass the, if you pass the gauntlet or the, the, uh, uh, the filter of innovation that this is a good idea, yeah. and whatever process innovation has for vetting that, then you're really lucky because you get to work with uh, really talented patent counsels yep. uh, who can really help you uh, get your idea uh, onto a piece of paper with defensible claims. Events, uh, you know, there have been unfortunately periods of my life when I'm far too busy with other things and I right. haven't put the attention into it. Right. And frankly, those patents have not gone as well. Right. The patents that have gone the best are those where I work on the patent as if I'm writing a manuscript. Yeah. So just as focused and just as relentless about pushing Perfection. forward. Yeah. yeah. And making sure you read every word, even if you don't understand it. Yeah, right. And they're going through it with a fine tooth comb. And, and because you're looking to find things that the patent council didn't think of uh, and to make sure that the patent council ca captured your thinking. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a collaboration of, of experts. It's how do you fit into your general work plan. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, you know, and uh, and do you do, it's just how you, fit, how you do your work and, and uh, do the things that uh, are, don't necessarily work, fit into your typical work day because so many of us do many things outside this place, not just uh, entrepreneurial activities, right. but we're working, doing stuff for the NIH or, or, or editing. Or coaching or a soccer or team. Or coaching a soccer team, right, yeah, exactly. All right, all right. No, I've done that. I bat basketball in my, in my all case. Right, so, all right. yeah. uh, uh, but um, I, I, for me, uh, the best time is the morning before everybody got up. It's hard to teach somebody that per se, but uh, just being incredibly compartmentalized and uh, incredibly uh, you know, force yourself to, if you're not necessarily, some people, uh, because they're, they're more social or, or whatever your personality is, you, you, you know, you're easily distractible, but uh, figure out ways to uh, put yourself into, an, uh, into a safe, uh, quiet environment, whether, uh, uh, and each one of us has our, our way yeah, of doing right, that, whether, right. it's, whether it's a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, uh, a, pro a dark room, quiet room, a morning, uh, a late evening, whatever it is, whatever is your quiet time. Um, but, th but in general, even in our busy lives, all of us, uh, it's just to be able to be able to switch gears and compartmentalize and go from one thing to another because inevitably, whether you're writing a grant or paper or a patent, right. you're bouncing between multiple conflicting things all the time. You're yeah, going right. back and forth to it and you never really, you very rarely can carve out the time where you uh, can catch five or ten minutes here or there, but more often you'll need more than that if you can get 30 minutes here or there to focus on it. Uh, but be able to switch gears very, very quickly, that's just a, a skill set you have to you have to learn. But um, um, yeah, I love it. Yeah, no, so, uh, and again, going back to some of your earlier comments, it would seem that your journey coming up through an entrepreneurial family and then your own personal preparation got you to the point, even at your first time through the process, you had a pretty good sense because, you, you know, you had prepared yourself and even though it had not yet been validated, it was worth sticking to. It was worth, you know, maybe skipping a little bit of sleep or uh, delaying, you know, whatever that other priority was. Or, as or, you or, 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 or giving up on uh, on giving up on some. That's right. Skipping sleep or uh, just uh, you know, for you know, I can't tell you for for good or bad for many many years. You know, we I just either focused on, focused on family or work. I, yeah, right. There was nothing outside of that. Yeah. That is incredibly motivating and. Uh, and uh, again, everybody's different, but um, uh, I think that uh, one of the biggest challenges, whether, you know, whatever phase you're in, in this whole process, whether it's the very beginning and getting the data that you need to establish the, the concept, whether it's the, getting the partners um, uh, that you need to promote the process, whether it's uh, raising the money uh, whether it's you know, getting, getting the, pat the patents then raising the money, 
uh, whether it's see, you know, seeing the organization of the entity or, uh, and, or seeing the, the events that are going on during the execution of the entity, there are going to be at each of those steps, every single one of those steps, potentially near-death experiences. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, the one thing that you have to learn how to do, um, and it, it, you know, it, you know it, I think it's innate, I think it's innate a lot in uh, most of the people that go into this profession. But one of the things you have to be prepared for is that event, and the uh, the to be um, figure out a way to be energized by that challenge. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I you know again I'm, I'm fortunate uh, that I can uh, I can compartmentalize apartmentalize and go from task to task pretty quickly um, and I think most of my, my colleagues are able to do that too but uh, uh, the uh, uh, I don't really have a, a particular I think it's a wonderful um, a wonderful goal that's really well articulated yeah. I don't have a specific goal that I'm going uh, going to get X amount of words done every day but I do what I do as I say to myself every single day is I'm not going to waste a minute yeah right and uh, I do have uh, I do have a list of, of projects uh, written all the time, right. which I cross out, which my father incidentally did too, <laughs> uh, and probably your brother, and my probably my brother. Yeah. So and you're very disciplined. Very disciplined. You, yeah. Firstly, uh, great science is the, the, the sort of the foundation. Right. And great science is absolutely essential for great business, but. Uh, there's an enormous amount of great science out there, but great science does not necessarily equate to great business. Yep. Um, so you have to uh, first uh, uh, take fit, uh, fit something that really is, is going to fit an unmet need. As yeah. my, uh, that, uh, as my brother would say, throw a party and nobody comes to it. Um, but uh, I think that that's the first thing. The second thing is, um, in general, and I tried to do this. Uh, I've tried to do this in each case. Sometimes better, sometimes worse. Uh, but as a rule of thumb, things that are uh, platforms um, are more likely to uh, have a better chance of flying as a uh, as a as an independent entity. Yes. So if you don't, and and uh, and platforms can be created. Um, you can have a platform in two different ways. Uh, one, you can have a platform where you think, and that's what I did the first time when we started Syntonix, is I thought about the platform um, uh, through the uh, lens or inspired by the biology. Uh, having had the first idea as to what uh, may be a, a clinical opportunity derived from our work, uh, and uh, focusing on a particular slice of biology that, ca that came from, I then looked at the biology in its totality. And in looking at that biology in the totality, I created a draft uh, for a business plan that encompassed uh, all the biologic uh, possibilities, or all, the, all the, the translational possibilities from the various biologic pathways associated with that molecule. Sure. And that created a platform. And that, uh, that really, uh, and that platform was, was um, because the biology was uh, so interesting, that platform uh, ended up being uh, very uh, um, uh, appealing yep. uh, to the business people and to the, the, uh, the financial people. Uh, but it also, once the company started, uh, and, I, uh, uh, and, that, and the same thing with the, 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 uh, the second time, but uh, that it's been my experience that that also provides a really good roadmap yeah. Uh, if it's well thought out for the folks who then come in and work in the company. Um, you know, many companies, when you get started, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll deviate from the initial roadmap. But if you've written a really good roadmap, it's amazing how durable and influential that can be, not only in getting the whole thing inspired and started in the first place, but providing uh, the, uh, the directions for the folks that come in and work in the project. If you don't have a platform, and it's a single idea, right, right it's a little bit more likely that it's going to end up being licensed. Uh, so uh, we're working on something else right now uh, that we don't know whether it's going to be a, a, a company. We're trying right. to form a company. Right. Uh, but it's also uh, getting traction as a, a license. Um, and, uh, and the licensing uh, also appeals to me as well because yeah. I've, 
had some amazing discussions with some amazing people who it could be licensed to, who I'm very fond of, and and I you know I just don't know where it's going to end up, but. Uh, both paths are, are perfectly valid because in the end, what's the goal? The goal is to get a drug into a patient. When you, when you go and you create your relationships, uh, you want to make sure that these are uh, individuals that will you know, be synergistic with you uh, through not just their money, uh, but through their expertise and their thinking um, and their connections and, and other values uh, that they, they might bring forward. Uh, so. Uh, you know, it, you just have to weigh all these options. You, you, there's things that are just obviously a licensing yeah, right, opportunity, right, right, right. but there, but you should try to think uh, uh, pathway platform to the best of your ability right from the beginning. Uh, even though it might end up being a license, it still would not even begin to have a breadth of opportunity as a as a real entity in, in the absence of that. You may not be able to generate the data to support those other ideas, but at least you've thought it out. And hopefully you can some have some data to support those other ideas. That's the, that's the optimal situation. Yeah, yeah. And patents to support those other ideas. Um, and uh, and platform, you know, sometimes, again, it's always a little different. Um, uh, it's best if the, uh, it, in that platform notion that those other ideas that you have are not necessarily uh, going after the same unmet need. Uh, but their 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 platform opportunities within or opportunities within the platform that are within the biologic fabric of the particular um, uh, and I'm talking about a biologic pathway, not a uh, a material or yeah, right, right, right. Or, or or other kind of um, more uh, product uh, uh, material kind of product. Uh, but uh, it's better to have that platform. Uh, where it's um, it's uh, targeting a, a, a very unique unmet need yes. within that biologic pathway, rather than another way to go at the same unmet need. That uh, that I found is not as appealing uh, to uh, uh, to investors and uh, and to others. Uh, it, 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 they they would see that more as a as a licensing opportunity. Yeah. Again, it's about being uh, disciplined and. Um, it uh, and I think what you what you when you start the company uh, that um, you uh, you'll find that you'll have a, a, a number of ways in which you can help make that successful. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, the very first thing that you you need to recognize is that uh, that you're going to be in interacting with a lot of people that are very different from you and have very different backgrounds. And, um, and, uh, and, and, uh, and it's gonna, you have to be, uh, you have to be willing to and, and capable of uh, interacting with many different styles and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and uh, also roles. Uh, and some, uh, some of the, you know, we see that in medicine, many personalities are aligned with certain subspecialties, yeah. well, you see the same thing in business. Certain uh, certain skill sets, whether it's on the financial side or the or the uh, the pharmaceutical side or the the scientists and so forth, have different personalities. But so you have to get comfortable with all those different uh, individuals. But first and foremost, you have to um, recognize that you're you're just suddenly become just a part of something much greater than yourself. Great. Um, and uh, you, you're no longer the center of attention. Um, it's no longer necessarily your program anymore. Right, right. And you have to accept that and thrive in that and be thankful that there are other folks that are coming in to try to take your idea uh, and, uh, and that, that have enthusiastically embraced it and you have to support them. And you can support them in many different ways. Um, and again, you should just not go into this uh, because it sounds like a, a, a cool <laughs> thing to do, uh, you should do. Th you should, uh, uh, or that everybody has to have a company. Yes. Yeah, you know, I was okay. when I did this, and I, my first time to start this in 1995. There was nobody that had any companies. Yeah, it wasn't a thing to do. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, so I can say this. Uh, um, I, I did it just because I wanted to get a drug into a patient. Yes. And that's the reason to start a company. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not just because it's a, it's a, it's to, you know, I don't, don't even put it on the, I'm not sure I even put it on the CVs, I, maybe I started to, but, um, 
you do this to get things into a yes, patient. Yes, yeah. Um, and uh, and the other, one way to make sure that you can do this at the same time make, maintain the rest of your life is to try to the best of your ability to align your academic life, especially on the research side, with your, uh, the scientific interests that support the company. Uh, so it's really important uh, to, and, and, it, and it's very important, uh, especially if you're an NIH-funded investigator, that not only do you, if you can, align the, the topic of your NIH grant with the yeah, goals nice. of, the, yeah. uh, of the company, uh, but make sure that there's a firewall between the two of them. Yes, yeah. And, but yet it's good that that happens because it's, uh, it's informing you and, and, uh, and allowing you to be a better um, participant in the company because you're really involved in still some of the, uh, some of the nascent biology that's being uh, discovered that will influence perhaps the thinking of the field that will ultimately uh, help to make sure that, that this and other things that are going down this path are successful. But that's a very important part of it, but it's, it's hard to do and navigate through because there's a, needless to say there's a lot of disclosures and, and, uh, and, uh, and requirements appropriately that we have to um, ascribe to that um, make sure that keeps us uh, honest and keeps us, uh, uh, keeps us um, uh, in, uh, in a open dialogue with our employees. So yeah. all, of my, all of my students and, and faculty and junior faculty in my laboratory, for example, are very aware of what's going on. And they, they, they actually thrive on it because in the end, they, they want to learn about yes, it. Yes, yeah, for sure. Um, and there's no point in keeping that a secret, but you have to do it within, a, uh, within, the, within the boundaries of the yeah, rules. Respect the categories. Respect yeah. the categories. And, uh, but once the company starts, if it's, uh, if it's not a licensing issue, uh, which is a little bit easier in some ways in terms of the boundaries, but if it's a company where there's equity or other kinds of uh, value that are being created, that um, you have, you do have to carve up your time a little yes, bit differently, yeah. and you're you're going to find that you're going to find a new set of uh, of relationships and friendships and and uh, uh, and components of of the uh, of the you know the activities of daily living or life that you're carving out your time a little bit more. Yes. So you're finding yourself, you know, I've, I found myself, and I try to do as much as I can virtually. As, and I physically not travel. Yeah, right, right. So I can do it right from my office. Right, right. Um, but you're going to have to be uh, very willing uh, to relinquish control of your ideas and transfer the know-how and teach them. Yep. And you're going to have to be very willing to, uh, you know, you have to be able to give up your time uh, and uh, to help uh, influence the, especially the early thinking until it gets uh, mature itself. Um, and you may even participate on the, on the board or a scientific advisory yeah. board. And each of those have a different set of um, time requirements and uh, roles to play where you take a different position. It sounds like um, you, you, you come out of an environment where you, know, you are the, you're the inventor or you're part of a team, but you're driving this to one where you're on a team, you, you are truly on a team, and you are certainly not the captain. That's correct. And and be prepared for that, and contribute as as most effectively as you can in, in that new uh, arrangement. That's exactly right. And embrace it. Yeah. And really get excited about it. And uh, don't if you know they may become even more expert than you are. Yeah. And that's the, that's the wish that they become more expert yes. than you are. Yeah. And then they start publishing papers in your field uh, that are even better than what you did. It's a little bit about you for uh, for the for the early days because you're so influential and important in the thinking and transferring the thinking. But very, very quickly, if it's successful, it's no longer about you and you have to make sure, you have a responsibility, you have a responsibility to investors. I remember the first time I started a company, I was scared to death. Yeah, right. Uh, because I really hated the idea of taking somebody el right, else's right, money and right. potentially failing. Yeah. That, that, that really scared the devil out of me. And uh, uh, I've gotten more comfortable. Not that I, yeah, yeah. I feel comfortable taking people's money, but if you have any, uh, have any talk about that. Yeah, right, right. right. But right. I still feel uncomfortable, but I don't, don't get scared to death anymore. I guess I have more confidence in myself in one way, but I also have gotten comfortable with the discomfort. Uh, but you have to really, uh, yeah, you're become a very, you have to respect and appreciate uh, all the things that the other essential yes, parts yeah. do. Uh, you have to uh, first. Uh, you, first thing you have to uh, 
remember, especially with investors, because the, uh, the, the lawyers, uh, typically when you work with the lawyers, they're on your side. Um, the, uh, typically, the, uh, the business folks in the, in the company or the science of the company are on your side. But the investors are a very different breed. Yeah. You know, yeah. So that's yeah. probably the hardest part. Uh, because uh, uh, the investors are much more bottom line yes. uh, yeah. than, than you're ever used to as a scientist. Uh, they, they, might, they might like to dream a little bit, but only when they're asleep. <laughs> we, we, you know, we in, you know, in, in academia, we like to daydream a lot. Yeah, right. Uh, right. We, 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 we get excited when we share ideas and go off and in directions together yeah. and have these open-ended uh, discussions. But you ha when you go to an investor, you have to be, uh, uh, you have to be incredibly uh, precise, yes. succinct. You have to be focused on um, very, you have to really synthesize the key elements of your work. Yes. Uh, it's a very different way to communicate than to anything you've ever seen before. Uh, uh, that uh, anything that you've ever gotten comfortable with, let's say, in, in medicine or science. Um, and so it has to be uh, really distilled into essential messages and, uh, and uh, that are very uh, focused on the end game. Yes. They have to be, it has to be, uh, uh, it has to be really focused on, the, it has to be product focused and, and focused on what the problem that's being solved. And, uh, and I must admit, I'm not. I'm still so much of a scientist. Yeah, that yeah. I till, still, it's even that part is even a little bit difficult for me at times because I still am so fundamentally scientifically by the way I do things. But you do have to accept that and do that, um, and you have to also be prepared emotionally because uh, they're so direct. Yeah, right. Uh, and they're very, and they're very, uh, and especially the successful ones uh, don't often give you a lot of time. Yes. So you have to be prepared for um, um, a uh, for what might seem abrupt, uh, but not take offense at it. My my business friends, my investor friends, uh, will tell me, "Give me the three minute, minute elevator." Yeah, right, pitch. right. Get your get your ideas down to a three minute elevator pitch, uh, because you're going to walk into a room with some investors um, who are really tight on yeah. time or or distracted for whatever reason or just by their nature. And you're going to have to really get them create a compelling story very very quickly. So get comfortable in your mind with a three minute a three minute elevator pitch, uh, and and uh, that that's really an essential tool that you can use in those kinds of meetings. Even as uh, as a at the very at the very least as an executive summary, as you enter into a, a maybe a longer uh, description of what you're trying to achieve. And in a way, being that succinct, three minutes is a very hard thing. It's the old Mark Twain uh, comment. I, if I had had more time, I could have said less. Right, that's right. And so a lot of prep just to get to that point. It's not easy. And, and you know, I think we would both observe a lot of academic commercialization falls down on that very point. Absolutely, including myself. You know, I've, I've, I've fallen on that sort more than once. And, and so as one leads up, give the time, apply yourself and and be disciplined about you know as many uh, points that might be made to add on to that core concept if you can't get it down within that very tight timeline you're gonna have a hard time getting investors that's correct and again it comes back to the fact that we as scientists get excited by even the smallest little thing mm -hmm. which is which is what we do so well but at the same time it's not necessarily uh, essential or uh, or necessary for what you're trying to achieve here, even though it's exciting and it's uh, yeah. and the, the, you know some of the the, the discoveries are, are amazing, but that may not be necessary for the uh, either the person or the goal at that time. Well, for me, it's always been a little bit easy <laughs> because it's always been my brother. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so, well, not necessarily always easy. I mean, uh, he, he's got his own personality, his own style, and his own set of abilities, which are very different than mine, and he's a force in his own right. Yes. Um, so uh, it's not always easy, Yeah. but it's the first place I go. <laughs> uh, but uh, that said, um, it wasn't always that way. Right. Um, and uh, we... Uh, uh, that um, I think that again, you, the person who's uh, the, the the business founder uh, may not necessarily become the CEO. Yes. 
of, um, and it's not necessarily, uh, they're not necessarily synonymous. Um, and we've done it both ways. Uh, um, but uh, the business founder is really uh, critical for helping you find the, uh, the CEO and the, and the business team that will fall out from that. So for, for again, for you as the inventor, recognizing those roles, recognizing that business founder and, and if they become the entrepreneur or other, um, you know, those are people with a unique set of skills and you're looking to combine yours with theirs, if you will. That's right, they're, they're, they're really, they're people uh, who have, who are essential. You can't do this by yourself. I mean, you could try, and you could maybe limp along, and uh, you could uh, maybe sort of do it. But you really, you really need uh, uh, people with uh, with business uh, sophistication, uh, because it's a different language. Uh, it's a different. It's a completely uh, set of. Um, uh, if you, uh, you know, they, they they apply themselves to many different. Um, uh, qualities in, that are necessary for building a successful organization uh, at every level. So uh, you just have to accept that. And it's, I think that you know, I've been lucky in the sense that I've been close to uh, you know, many of these people. They're, 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 they're friends uh, and like my family. Um, but I think the hard part is uh, to tell somebody who doesn't have those relationships yes. how you find them. And I think that. Um, that's where the innovation uh, uh, office becomes really important uh, with uh, executives and residents uh, who are really who to align yourself with quite uh, quite quickly, uh, who at least be, give, be able to get, begin to get you going, and maybe there'll be a long-term relationship will derive from that. Yeah, again, it depends how you enter into that. Um, first of all, the first is how to get access to it. Uh, the second is once you do get access to it, how do you present yourself? Um, and uh, again, the, it depends which element of the pharmaceutical company you're dealing with. Are you dealing with somebody who, who is of like mind? Right. And you're coming in on the scientific side, as opposed to if you're coming in on the business development yes. side. Yeah. Those are two completely different portals into a, a pharmaceutical company. And, the, and, the, on the, and I think you just, uh, you, you treat them pretty much the same way as you would treat any, uh, certainly on the business development portal, you would treat them uh, uh, like you would any other investor, although uh, by and large they might be, you know, as a rule of thumb, a little bit more interested in the science than the, the concept and the opportunity uh, as a pure uh, financial person on the venture capital side. Um, uh, uh, but again, the, on the, on the, on the um, on the, on the scientific side, you're going in through one of the scientific portals. That's like talking to a colleague. Uh, and uh, that is something a young person doesn't necessarily or, or always recognize, although I, I think that more, more and more is, you know, 1995, right. I think nobody recognized it. Right. But now in 2019, uh, especially in Boston with uh, just the, the way it's grown, so I think everybody recognizes finally that uh, scientists uh, who are in industry can do just as great science, yeah. science as scientists who are in academia, but they just have different problems to solve. So you can speak to them um, uh, more as a, as a colleague, uh, as a scientific colleague, and get them excited in that way, as opposed to more of the business portal way. And again, one thing I, I, I want to emphasize is, we didn't emphasize enough because we're so focused on the business side, uh, but uh, either at the, from the very beginning uh, to have uh, established a peer group of clinically oriented, scientifically oriented folks in academia, or maybe uh, who come in and from, who have industry experience to help you on the back end before you go into the front end. And uh, and it's ver it's more important to have I always uh, one of the one of the, the, the colloquialism I, I I like like to say I'd like to I rather have a little bit of a lot than a lot of nothing so it's more important to create a team and, and share uh, both the responsibilities but also the rewards yep. of the whole thing great well here we are having having uh, coffee with innovators uh, thank you Rick it's a real pleasure for us.
And uh, and to quote a famous philosopher, it is what it is. It is, what it is. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for Thank that. It's always a pleasure to spend time with you.